Hello and welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel titled Dhawal Kumar Surti. In this specific channel, I am sharing lot of video about pharmaceutical industry, knowledge about the pharmaceutical knowledge, sharing my experiences and uh, sharing my knowledge so that everyone can be benefited. If you like my channel, you can subscribe to my channel. And in this in this video, I will talking about the smoke study. I got lot of uh, queries from my uh, subscribers, from my friends that. You, can, you also prepare a video on the smoke study. So, this specific video, I will start. This is my first video on the smoke study topic. So, I will start uh, and uh, later on we will make more videos. So, please, please be with me. So, let us understand first of all what is smoke study. So, critical airflow or smoke study, what we call is used to maintain the aseptic conditions when manufacturing sterile products under the aseptic conditions, right. So, when we are manufacturing sterile products, we have to maintain the aseptic conditions under the laminar airflow. And how to ensure that airflow is proper? For that, we cannot see air, but we can see smoke. So, smoke is used as a visual aid, visual help, so that we can understand that really the, our airflow is laminar. So, smoke study is basically used to maintain the aseptic conditions when manufacturing sterile products under the aseptic conditions. The smoke study is the visualization of critical airflow is used to demonstrate unidirectional airflow and sweeping action over and away from the product. So, we, we need to protect our product. So, whatever air is coming, it should be grade A air, it should be grade A. There will be no microbial contamination, the particulates within the grade A limits, microbial contamination within grade A limits, but how to ensure? So, air should come and sweep away from the product. It should not be turbulent, it should not be bouncing back, it should not, it should not happen that air is not coming to the working height or where the product is kept. So, it will not be helpful if the air is not coming up to the working height. So, for that demonstration, we need smoke study. So, why we need smoke study? The design of physical objects such as process equipment. So, in the, in the filling machine, there will be lot many instruments. We, we can have filling assembly, we will have a, if it is a wire filling line, we will have a stopper, bowl, seal bowl, we have assembly, we have infeed, outfeed, everything that that setup will be there. So, how to ensure that that setup is not disturbing the airflow? So, the pro, uh, obstacles are process equipment, our operating procedure. So, we are doing lot of interventions during the aseptic assembly lot of uh, interventions, aseptic manipulation while we are filling the product. So, how this uh, interventions, how this aseptic manipulation are not creating turbulence, are not blocking the air. Uh, there is a concept called first air. First air is which where the air directly coming from the LF is coming into the contact with the open product container, empty or filled. So, that container should receive the first air, that is the air which is not came into the any other contact after leaving the HEPA filter from the top. It is called first air. So, our equipment, our operating procedure, our personal movement, product handling should consider basic aerodynamic requirements to prevent serious turbulence in the vicinity of the contamination source. So, Within our product vicinity, there should not be any turbulence, there should not be obstacles, physical obstruction from the equipment. So, this is the first and foremost requirement for filling of the aseptic product. And for that, to demonstrate that we are providing grade A air to our product, we need to demonstrate to the smoke study. Now, second question about the smoke study is that what are the regulatory guidelines? Lot of People ask, okay, we need to perform smoke study, but where is the guidance requirement for that? So, for this specific purpose, we will understand what are the guidance requirement. So, FDA guidance for industry September 2004 states that proper design and control prevents a turbulence and stagnant air. Understood. Proper design and control prevents turbulence and stagnant air in the critical area. Once relevant parameters are established, relevant parameter means our airflow our air velocity, our particulate counts, that if once it is established, it is crucial that air flow pattern should be evaluated. 
for the turbulence or eddy current. So this is the requirement as per the September 2004 guidance for industry. Eddy currents that can act as a channel. So eddy current cannot act as a channel or reservoir for air contaminants. Example from the adjoining lower classified area. If so, if my air is not going outside, if my LF or if my if my grade is not positive, then outside air can can come inside. So it should go away. So that positive pressure has to be mentioned. In situ air pattern analysis, which we call smoke study. So in the guidance, it is mentioned that in situ air pattern analysis should be conducted at the critical area. Critical area means grade A where we are filling our aseptic product, sterile product. To demonstrate that unidirectional airflow and sweeping action over and away from the product under dynamic conditions. So this is the requirement as per the guidance for industry September 2004. The studies should will be well documented with written procedures, written conclusions. So study we have not only we have to perform the study, not only we have to prepare the video, uh, video of the smoke study, but we also have to prepare a report, written conclusion that whether my smoke study requirement has been met, whether whatever the acceptance criteria I have established are meeting the criteria or not meeting the criteria that we have to write. We cannot simply say that see the, see the video and conclude for yourself, it is very clear, no, we have to write it. And include, uh, see, what it says, the studies should be well documented with written conclusions and include evaluation of the impact of the aseptic manipulation. See, if we are performing any aseptic manipulations, example interventions and equipment design. So, is there any impact of aseptic manipulation or equipment design, we have to document into the written record. Video tap or other recording mechanism have been found to be useful. So what it says, video tap and other recording mechanism have been found to be useful aids in assessing air flow initially as well as facilitating evaluation of the subsequent equipment configuration changes. So once you set up your new line, you have to perform the smoke study. After that also, if you are making any changes, you have to evaluate and repeat the smoke studies as and when required based on your evaluation. It is important to note that even successfully qualified systems can be compromised by the poor operational maintenance or personal practices. So people say, we have a very good machine, we have important machine, I have qualified airflow, I have air velocity, I have integrity, I have particulate count within limit, I have viable count within the limit, so why I need smoke study? Guidance says, it is important to note that even successfully qualified systems can be compromised by the poor operational maintenance or personal practices. So hope this makes clear that why we need smoke study as per the guidance requirement. Hope this will be helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching my video. Thank you.